Welcome back to another video here on the John Doc YouTube channel. Today is the day, triple entry. We are giving away Boom Hauer, our nitro Ellis Swap Mustang. This thing is badass. Did I say it has nitro on it? Yes, it does. This thing right here, Pistons Rods LS, set up for nitrous. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Holly EFI, TH400, Bill 88. This thing is a true muffin cap peeler, set up to run no prep on nitrous. And all you have to do to get entered to win this thing is go to lsnasty.com. It is the first link in the description below. And today and today only, we got a special discount code for Logie with the Big Hoagie's birthday. You get $1 off if you use access code Hoagie. And I'll put it on the screen because it's very difficult to spell and it took me about three tries to spell it right. I had to Google it. Yes. Nitrous. We have new hats up there. We got small block forward nasty hats for all you nitrous guys. That have a small block forward. And we got small block forward nasty shirts up on the website available now. The hats are finally available so you guys can get those. Uh, we got brand new American flag inspired LS nasty shirts. We have no nitrous inspired shirts. We got flags, we got hats, we got socks, we got stickers, we got key tags, we got posters, signed posters, only a few left, they're limited edition, you guys can get those as well. Uh, and we got a bunch of badass stuff. So uh, this right here today is the last day of the giveaway. Like I said, it's triple entry. You can get a dollar off if you use the access code Hoagie. So you guys can ball out on the website. We got a bunch of really badass stuff. We got a mystery box, which is absolutely killer. It's got a limited edition shirt, which you guys can only get through the mystery box. It's got uh, the giveaway right here. It's sad that it's coming to an end. This thing has been uh, really fun. It's been a great car to have here on the channel. Uh, had some great upgrades with it, putting the Holly Terminator on there. The car runs great at the track. You guys see it. We go rounds running the streetcar class. Um, and I'm very excited for someone to win this. So today is the last day. You got until midnight to get entered to win this badass LS Swap Nitrous. Holly EFI powered Mustang. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to go to lsnasty.com, discount code HOGIE, H-O-A-G-I-E. Alright guys, welcome back to another video here. Uh, we are here at Coker Chassis, we got Bob. Rocking the Calmero shirt. Look at that classic right there. Calmero was out uh, doing rolling burnouts and uh, really wasn't the best no prep vehicle. Uh, I would say it's a good street car, but not really a good race car. And, and that's why we're here. We're working on race car stuff. Doing the race car. So uh, Colorado update. This is uh, the third update. We had the first one dropping the uh, truck off. Kind of went over the game plan of this. Uh, we came by and did an update when you really had the truck cut apart. Um, Getting like the rear end kind of centered in there, but nothing really like laid out. I think no. had some some four structure, a couple things in there, but compared to what it is now, it's like night and day. Oh yeah. So now we're on the home stretch. Bob's been working on it, getting knocked out. Uh, so we're gonna show you guys the update, uh, pretty much what's all done to it, uh, and then we'll talk about what we got left to do. So just a little some odds and end things. Uh, but I know you guys haven't seen inside here yet. This thing's absolutely ridiculous. I think the most impressive part here is when you uh, look inside the door. It looks like a full blown race car. So. This thing is wild. Bob, do you mind explaining kind of what all the bars are and what they're doing in here and in what position they are? What we did is we made a double frame rail for you. Um, tied everything into the mid plate. Mid plate's a pretty important spot in the vehicle. Um, tied it all back into the four link and all that. Uh, put your race steering column in here. Funny car cage. Your uh, race tech seat. Race tech seat. Uh, so this thing I right guess here we're going to run exposed transmission. Exposed transmission. At, at people, I'd say a lot of people are scared of running the exposed transmission. I think it's more of a mental thing because really any little bit of carbon or sheet metal you have, they're really not going to stop it. It's anything. not going to stop what's coming through. Um, and we talked about this. So I think in the last video when we were up here, we were talking about what we're going to do running the double frame rail, keeping the factory floors. Uh, and we're trying to build the truck to fit in as many rules as possible. And I think it, you know, it still does. Still has factory floors in there. Transmission tunnel we removed as far as working on the truck, working on the transmission, the drive shaft, anything. A lot easier. Way easier. Um, a lot easier to install the double frame rail stuff because obviously we're not trying to put floor back in there. Uh, and I think that the double frame rail is like a cool feature that this truck's going to benefit from. Uh, to eliminate any chances of being a soft pretzel, as that's, that's Bob's terminology, a soft pretzel. We don't want soft pretzels <laughs> no, around here. Not. 
Um, and then you ran that all the way to the uh, mid plate. Yep. And then from the mid plate, we tied it into the where the front control arms mount. And then we ran bars out to the front frame rails to put your uh, motor plate into. And I will say, like uh, the attention to detail and stuff, if you uh, see all the motor plate stuff and mid plate stuff, it bolts in, but it's got a bolt welded on the back side. So you're not standing there with, you know, uh, a ratchet and a wrench on the other side. Uh, same with the mid plate as well. So I think it's motor like. Motor change is going to be a lot easier. Yeah, you a lot just faster. zip it off and, and you're good to go. Um, God, he already knows this. He does know us. You know, we're over there with like four wrenches trying. Well, I am at least. Um, but yeah, this look this looks great. I, I'm. We really. What do you think about our um, motor plate mount previously? The angle iron. It was. Mm. It was probably not going to cut it. No, that wasn't going to make it. So having this tied in uh, to really the chassis, I think is uh, is huge, and the mid plate mounts tied into the chassis as well. So everything's all triangulated, tied in everywhere. So it's going to be like super super rigid and sound i mean i think it, it, it's very rigid yeah th this is we were talking earlier this is probably i mean it's not probably this is going to be the nicest piece at the shop because it's just every every box is checked i mean it's got all the bars in the right places uh, everything looks good i know last time we were here we talked about drive shaft clearance with the rear end for running radial stuff uh, that's a big thing you said yeah like eight and a half inches of drive Plenty. shaft clearance Plenty. yep so yeah. that is um unbelievable because you know we're on big four inch drive shaft having that much clearance that's really the issue that we always run into put the wishbone up top here we'll go back here and talk about the rear end stuff um as you can see it doesn't have a bed on it right now we're working on a removable bed just like a removable front we went to back to remove so remove so <laughs> factory fenders up front factory bed uh but you're building a some sort of mechanism contraption where it'll, you know take quick, it off quick pin, yep. pull it off yep and then that'll just piss everyone off when they're like, they see this just sitting there like this, they'll be like, it's definitely a pro mod. Uh, but I can confirm it's not a pro mod. You can see the factory frame down there. Uh, so a bunch of bars back here. You got a lot of stuff going on. You got the four link brackets down there. You got your four link bars. You got your wishbone up top, uh, which we talked about. That I think that's a, a huge key. Uh, Bob mentioned changing uh, third members is, is a breeze now. You really have nothing in the way. Yank the drive shaft out of it and you can go to town. Uh, also allows for a lot more drive shaft clearance uh, and a roll bar mounted up top. I mean, everything is, it's just, it's spot on. So you, this rear end housing actually was a barrier end housing that yep. you we put all the, the braces and everything on it, all the four link brackets, stuff for the wishbone. So wishbones got the yep. roll bar tabs, the four link brackets. Uh, we got the adjustable shock mounts in the back. Um, this was a, it was a quarter max kind of, yes. we, we use all quarter max parts on this stuff. I like quarter max. I think they make really good stuff. I'm um, a quarter max guy now. Yeah, Bob, Bob's a quarter max guy, but the, the rear end back braced, and it was all bare. So if you guys remember in the first video, it was just a bare rear end. Uh, Bob welded everything out on it, and it looks it looks killer. So uh, we got some strange axles we threw in there, some strange brakes. Bob sent me the measurements, got them ordered up, slapped it right in there, good to go. Uh, really painless as far as getting everything together you just text me and say hey i need this yep send me the info, info i need get it sent this way and uh yeah i mean this thing is is looking serious as far as hanging weight back here you're plenty strong enough so if we need to hang yep. weight we can hang weight speaking of weight do you think this is going to be a heavy vehicle not at all yes not Fine, at all. finally we're getting into a, like a, like everything i own is heavy like everything even my race car weighs like 2800 pounds my street car weighs 4,000, so this thing right here, uh, this is like uncharted territory for me. Uh, so we got um, pretty much everything back here. Is Should we like like maybe have people take a guess what it's gonna? Yeah, that you know that's a good idea. Everyone comment down below. So what? So at, what, before it leaves here, we're gonna weigh it. Well, before we roll it out of here, just what the chassis weighs. No, I what? think we should do a finished build like what like race ready race ready so you guys know the black sheep with me and it weighs 2760 so and this is getting a very similar setup we're switching from the large frame turbo back to a gt55 uh so it's ls two speed 400 single turbo cast block cast head uh but this is a truck so comment down below i'm gonna remember to go back in this video uh put your guess down there of what you think it weighs it's still got factory factory frame factory floor factory firewall factory front suspension Factory control arms up front. I mean, it's got a lot of factory stuff. All steel, all glass. What's Wait. your guess? You guys can't just copy Bob's guess either. Be original, <laughs> all right? Already, take a second, pause the video, type your comment in, 
click post and then listen to what with Bob's guess it? is. Am I in it? With you in it. With with me in it. It was the black sheep weighs twenty seven sixty. So with me in this thing, what do you think it'll weigh? Twenty five twenty. Yeah, this thing weighs twenty five twenty. Well, you should, you, in it. you should see Logan's face right now. He's like, damn, twenty five twenty. There's a lot of cars out there that have a lot of fiberglass and a lot of carbon that can't get to that weight, and I own one of them. So the metal on this is not. It's not thick. Yeah, it's no. not not the heavy. No, stuff. it's not heavy. The doors, I don't think it, you'd gain by putting a fiberglass door on. It's by the time you put bracing in the door and do what you got to do, you Wait, it's not going to weigh much more than that. I will say up front we. We got rid of the factory um, factory steering rack. All right, so like we said before, um, went to a manual rack for a couple reasons. The other one probably wasn't the best to have an open rack. Junk gets in there, uh, but also it was probably not in the right position and there was a huge, like the bolt, this is literally the bolt out of it. This is the reason we changed the rack. I couldn't leave that bolt in there. <laughs> that thing is the thing's bad. like a foot long. Yeah, and it's, it's heavy too. So I uh, went to a manual rack. Manual rack, definitely much safer. Yep. Uh, uh, we got adjustability for bumps here now. So we got all that where it should be. And you made some, some very nice custom pieces here for the bump steer to make sure that it is like set up correctly because that was an issue before. Uh, also made a steering shaft that goes to the column that you fabricated as well. So like the whole thing from like literally front to back, all custom, uh, one off clears the headers I mean it's it's the truth so it looks really good I'm excited to now be able to turn and not have like junk stuck in there or all that like yeah make a mess before you turn it and like fluid would come out of it and I couldn't tell you how many times I've turned it but it seemed like every time you turn it more fluid would come out of it so that's all you needed to be on the start line you cut the wheel one way you say it's leaking you can't make a pass like the little things like that I'm learning is it's worth to have removed from the equation uh, and then the rest of this stuff here is just like chassis heaven so if you like if logan rolls back here we got a removable transmission cross member which uh is very useful because now we can get the transmission at the bottom of the car but also the double frame rail is tall enough i think we're going to build a slider so we can do like converter changes or anything Stater on the fly change, yep. in the car so we'll be able to literally yank the transmission back and it'll go up where you'll have access to the converter um and then you'd be able to bolt everything right back in but yeah, I mean, this thing is... This is how you get light stuff, too. So. Yeah, everything's like, all cut out. You have to get rid of what you don't need. And then, like like I was saying before, with the attention to detail stuff, cut the floor out. He's got bars running here. The floor is welded to the bars. Uh, he's got a uh, nut welded to the back of it where the seat mounts. So the seat's not mounted to the, the floor. It's actually mounted to the chassis. So uh, that is extremely safe. Over here, some trick stuff. The seat mount is mounted directly to... The chassis itself is mounted to the frame and did you like you had to do some some custom fabricating there to yeah, get that we, stuff to work yeah and we build a little bit of that you know so yeah, it's just, like you can't just put a slab of metal in there just can't put a piece in you have you to cut the center of it yeah, out you have to do something with it and it's, it's the it's the little details that make it as far as um as trucks go this is as far as colorado's go i'm going to say this is probably the most extreme chassis that any colorado has seen uh, everything's all it's got you get your tabs for your seat belts up there like I said, the seat's mounted properly. It's not just, you know, bolted to the floor. The, I guess I still got to sit in there too to show them like the, the wheel position. Did you like eyeball or you had an idea where it needed to be? Yeah, it was pretty close. Bob, I came up here to get fitted and be like, oh, we need to put the steering wheel here and I sit in the car and I'm like, oh, it's perfect. So the seating position, the steering wheel, all that stuff's great. Um, Back here, like you were saying, easy. Yeah, this is how the car is going to go down track. If you need to, pull the third member out of it. It's literally, you take the drive shaft out, you unbolt it, and you can work on it. Extremely serviceable, uh, friendly at the track. Um, have a drive shaft enclosure because we're gonna run exposed transmission, so the drive shaft's gonna be coming out of it. That'll be put in there. Uh, and then really just like a couple of odds and end things. Um, mount shifter, finish, I guess, mounting the steering, the yep. steering column, which is already in the perfect position, so just tack that out. Uh, and then- Parachute. Parachutes and parachute handle yep so definitely the home stretch and then home it goes and home it goes then i think uh after getting it back the chassis is is probably one of the more capable ones we own so as far as trying to go fast i think this thing will be right at home trying to go fast 
So we'll, we'll probably run it with a slick a little bit. We'll run it with some radials for sure. And uh, yeah. Be able to service the motor too from underneath. Yeah. Oh, you can drop it's the whole. Removable. You can drop the whole oil pan. Doesn't look like it, but it is. This right here uh, is removable. There's enough clearance here from where the pan is that you can literally drop the whole pan. Uh, and I think that's one thing that I really like about this is that it is very serviceable. So that. Uh, Do you just work on stuff a lot. You know, if you can tell by this block with this hole in the side of it, um, oh. we try to we try to see how fast we can remove like pistons and rods with just air. So, nitrous stuff you can chemically remove pistons and rods, but we like to do it with air. And as you can see, we've done all right on this one. All right, hop so up in there, Junior. We don't have to use the quick release because it's not welded out yet. But same thing. And this is where this is where Bob said. Uh, what you felt like this was where, where it needed to be felt good a yeah. good racing position first of all uh race tech seat super comfortable i haven't sat in well, i've been sitting in a kirky seat for the past couple months uh and you forget how how comfortable this is got your head restraints on there i got yelled at i was telling bob i got yelled at for not having proper head padding um this has the head padding right built in the seat so the uh steering wheel position is is literally perfect i feel like sitting in the truck you could see out pretty good no cowl hood or anything on there we're gonna put the dash back in there because Logan wants the dash back in there, but I usually build them so I can fit in them. Yeah, just in case. Just in case. Just I'll, in case. Bob, this thing scared me. I need you to take the wheel, then <laughs> then, you, then you'll be good to go. Uh, but no, this thing. Um, yeah, it's good. I like the seating position though. It's pretty. I mean, it's as far back as you can really yeah. put it. Uh, but is that is that beneficial? Yeah, I'd like to get the driver back as far as you can. Give your enough leg room yep that's one thing pedals. won't be won't be scrunched up we're going to put the pedals you kind of just pick and choose where you want them um so i guess for like kind of how i sit like right there would be pretty good uh pretty sporty driving position get the shifter mounted right here switch panel up there and we're ready to roll and it feels good it's a little weird it's going to take a little bit while to get used to sitting right next to the transmission but at least in this one, being a truck, you're kind of like up and, yeah. and pretty far away from it. That, that's why the double rail ended up higher because of just how a truck is built, you know. Uh, it's a whole lot taller than the car. Yeah, yeah. You know, the third gen Camaro that we have. It's a nice armrest. Yeah, it is, it is put nice. put a cup holder for you if you like. I literally said that. I was like, we need to build a cup holder. <laughs> just to be like we have cup holders? Yeah. Yeah. We no, put a second is, seat in it. It um, you, could re you could really tell the difference once you say like, hey, it's, it's a truck compared to a car because the transmission in the other car is like right here like you're right. sitting next to it it's up real high you're like crunched down in the car oh uh, and this one is you never have this kind of headroom no. in any vehicle headroom is unbelievable not gonna be banging the helmet off no, the cage on no, this thing no. so it is um the funny car cage in here is is awesome you got gussets everywhere uh typical coker fashion the fitment is high and tight like at the way uh i mean honestly this is what i think can be the coolest part about this truck is when it's sitting in the staging lanes with the door shut and the windows up you're not gonna you're not gonna that. you're gonna have no idea what's going on it's it's obviously gonna have like a, a deep dish wheel in there so you're like oh they put a nine inch under it or something but you'll have no idea that the truck is like as extreme and wild as it is um all the bars nothing going out of the back window into the bed everything's gonna be hidden by the bed put a bed cover on there if we tint the windows, you won't even know the double rails. Oh, there. they're getting tinted. Yeah, they're going to be tinted okay. windows all around. Like, you shut the doors on this thing, normal truck, Colorado. And it's back to the Pepsi truck. Back to the Pe We might have to put a Pepsi logo on it. I'm putting the numbers back on it. It's like 05 something. Oh, we, we might have to. Imagine that. Imagine getting gapped by a Pepsi truck. As Zaxby's. Zaxby's, that, that's always a tongue twister for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Zaxby's. this thing is, um, this is awesome. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Uh, Bob absolutely knocked out of the park so uh we were excited building it for you yeah no i can't now now the next thing is we got to get out there and race it so and that's one thing about this truck is uh like the black car we always take to a really nice track we're gonna run slicks on this thing a bunch uh we're gonna run radials on it uh we're gonna go out there and race it 28 inch tire shootouts like this is a, a tool for the channel to bring content to you guys so uh, and to race and to win so hopefully this i feel good i mean the chassis right here is, is definitely everything you need to win it's all done right no corners cut um i will be there for the first race are you i go to the first race with every vehicle we've been talking to bob we want bob to come down there and run some radial stuff because he does build a bunch of badass stuff just got done building a um 66 nova i think we, we looked at the nova last time yeah yep. at the pro charger on there they took it out to beaver springs uh made a shakedown in it and it hauled ass 
and pretty much put everyone on notice. Yeah, it's out there, so we can say it, it went 490 its first pass, 151 in the eighth. Like just shake it down. Yep, off, I was on shakedown pass, but off the ramps, Beaver Springs, effortless. Yeah. So now everyone in in Pennsylvania is, is shook because Coca Chassis at it again. So and then we're gonna bring this down North Carolina. We're gonna shake up everyone down North Carolina. So. That was our first radio car too. We built first radio. Uh, We've converted Bob. I remember the first time I came here, Bob's like, what are you doing on those little tires? And now look at him. Now he's got like two sets of small tires in here. And he's building his car, which you got, we showed uh, last time, which we'll have to look at it again, because last time it was just a couple bars on the chassis table. Made some great progress there. And you even said, I'll be able to run radials or slicks. So I said we take this thing out to Beaver Springs once we get it shook down. Should we do that? We'll, we'll uh, come back up here? Yeah. All right. All right, that's locked in. So if you guys are up here in northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, we'll be back with the Colorado once we get the motor put in there. We're going to send some stuff off to Powder Coat when we get back. Uh, really, I think we got all the parts to slap it together, and uh, and then we'll go and do some racing. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, Colorado is is sweet, and I think the next the next update will probably be picking it up. Yep. Right? I'll yep. come up here with trailer. We'll shove it in the box. And uh, we'll hit the road and get to work back down North Carolina. So uh, if you guys need any chassis work or anything like that, fabrication, chassis, cages, um, back halves, front halves, turbo kits, uh, parts. Restorations. So, restorations. Quarter max parts, uh, pro charger stuff, Neil Chance converters. Yeah. Uh, hit up Bob, Coke Chassis. Link's always in the description below. And he can get you taken care of, do this killer work, and then get you rolling. So i definitely give a shout out to Quarter Max. They yeah first time i use their stuff and i'm impressed yeah the quarter it's I like quality quarter stuff uh everything fit yeah worked that, well i think that's like the biggest thing especially in this industry is you, you order stuff a lot of times and they don't fit or they're wrong or or you can't get it or you can't get it quarter max stuff everything you told me it would be here in a day yeah. or two and it was here in a day or two so no no complaints at quarter max they're a bunch of great guys over there i love dealing with them uh strange axles and stuff that they, they got here really quick yes. too so uh, sooner than we thought yeah uh, uh, they said two weeks and they showed up in a week so um there's a lot of moving parts to put one of these cars together and uh it's great when they're all yeah. working together so and lately that's like big if you can get something yeah because you can't get parts anywhere you can't especially when you're like me when you're always breaking them and blowing them up so he get to buy this round. John Doc got to buy this round. The black feet on the property. He got to buy for the next round.